up you guys? My name is Emma, aka Little Mix Girl. How are you guys doing? I'm so glad you guys clicked on this video. This is something major I've been wanting to talk about but haven't been feeling qualified to talk about it yet since I am still going through it. So it is basically my journey of getting back my prayer life, my quiet time, and my consecration to God. These are all really big important things that once you lose them, it is a fight to gain them back. It's easy and dandy to lose them because that's what the devil wants you to do. But when you want to go back into the secret place where God lives and abide under him, it feels like all hell is loosed on you to stop you because it is. So let's just get into this video. I have my notes right here and I'm just going to start in like chronological order of when I first realized that my prayer life was kaput. This started in winter of 2021 and I was in church. The word was on fire. The worship was awesome and I actually even sung that day on worship team, I just knew there was a difference because I couldn't tap in like I used to when I would sing on praise and worship team. And I felt like I was just going through the motions. I knew there was something very, very wrong here. By the time second service was over, the pastor, he had went over time because he sensed the presence of God in that place. And he was like, you know what? We're just gonna let you guys stay here, let you guys praise, let you guys worship, let you guys just lay at the altar. And I was so thankful for that because that's when it hit me what was going on here. So. Literally, I got off the platform, bawled my eyes out. I was just grieving. I literally was grieving like somebody had died or I lost somebody because I realized I had lost that closeness with the Holy Spirit. I lost that close-knit tightness with the Lord. And that scares me because that's when little tiny things would start picking at you and messing with you. And around this time, I was in the middle of my second semester of college. I'm gonna get my degree, but I just, there's just something for me. This is just for me. But when I go back to school, it feels like all I can do is just focus on school and I have no time and I don't prioritize my relationship with God because I'm just going, 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 going for school. And at that time, I was going really hard in ministry. Like I was like trying to serve in two ministries. Being a full-time college student and trying to serve in two ministries is not smart for me because one, there was already a stretch of time that I could give. Adding extra things on my plate was not the smartest thing to do. So I was just going. I was not stopping. I was not being mindful of God. I was not resting. I was not consulting God. I was literally just going out of my own strength. So I hadn't been consecrating myself to him for a while and the fire, the hunger, and the passion for him was out. I literally felt like a light was out in me. And that's the worst thing that could ever happen to you. So it's Matthew 25, one through 13. Basically the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. So basically there were, yes, 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom, Jesus. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So that means they couldn't keep the light burning throughout the night. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So therefore they can replenish the fire in those lamps and never go out. I was without oil. I was out from under his anointing because I was trying to do it all on my own. I was literally walking out from under his anointing. Whenever you hear about oil in the Bible, it's metaphoric to his anointing. Like his anointing saturates you from head to toe. Like when they would anoint people, they would just pour a whole bucket of oil and it would just saturate them from head to toe. And what that oil does is it prevents bugs and like little gnats. You get what I'm talking about? Little demons, little gnats, little situations, little voices sticking onto you and affecting you. It would just brush off of you because the anointing oil was just covering you from head to toe. And so because I was out of his anointing, that oil wasn't on me and that fire wasn't being burnt up and kindled and staying alive. And therefore little things were sticking onto me and attacking me and messing with me and getting me all confused and getting me frustrated and annoyed. I was getting selfish. I was getting smart out with my mom my mouth my mouth my mouth that's when you know I'm tripping when my mouth start getting bold like I said the fire and the hunger and the passion for him like the genuine passion for him was just it hasn't been the same since before this year so 2021 2021 was a year of just 
fire revival consecration. And then 2022 happened, and then all of a sudden it's like I forgot what God did for me, what God's brought me out of. Therefore, I started realizing the cravings for worldly desires and watching bad influences, I was starting to feed them. So like literally, I would get home from school or I would get off of work and immediately the first thing I would do was eat and watch a YouTube video. Instead of, now that I'm done for the day, let me go read my Bible and go study my Bible, then eat and go talk to my family. And the more and more I was feeding the temptation and the cravings, the farther I was being pulled away and the less desire I had to run after him. It became really hard to resist temptation and I began to compromise. There's a lot of YouTubers that are Christian YouTubers in their lifestyle and I just started watching them all the time. But then under them, there's like recommended videos of people that have like the same content but they're not Christian. I started clicking on their videos and watching it and I felt the conviction of like Emma, get that, get stop watching that. No. That's not okay. That's not godly. That's not edifying the Lord. That's not helping you be more like Jesus, is it? That's what the Holy Spirit was telling me. But me, on the other hand, I was like, but I want to relax and I want to watch something funny and I want to be entertained. What is the root word of entertain? Enter. So I was entertaining myself with demonic influences and so it, demonic things were entering and I would go to bed and I would literally have wacko dreams. And then the books. I started reading this summer. Reading is an amazing thing. Books are powerful because they have a lot of knowledge in them. The right ones. But I was not reading the right ones. I was trying to read secular romance books that were all talked about on like Instagram and through book YouTubers and TikTok. I would read them and I would get to chapter five and I would have to return the book because I'm like, oh no, absolutely not. This is witchcraft. Or, oh no, absolutely not. They're doing drugs and alcohol. Or, oh no, they're just straight up having sex or cussing or whatever. Just everything that is debauchery and against what the Bible says that we should be reflecting and acting like. Letting in demonic influences and not stopping them because I was like, well, you know, this and that is not bad, so I'll just keep on reading and just read over that. That's compromise, and that is a spirit. And what compromise does is it leads you farther and farther away from the will of God without you realizing it. Because you just think, oh, well, I'm not doing this much sin, but I'm just doing this much sin. It's still sin at the end of the day. After all of this, I was beginning to feel old habits and thought patterns come back and I was becoming lukewarm. And that's what compromise does. It causes you to be on the fence where you're not hot and you're not cold. You're just in the middle. And what does God say? He'll spew them out of his mouth. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be spewed out of the Lord's mouth. I don't. That doesn't sound fun. So currently I'm doing W.O.V., which is women of valor and it is so powerful it's helping me to see the importance and the vitalness of having a regular quiet time a regular schedule of just meeting god in your day throughout the day talking to him praying to him reading your word studying your word since i've started it though it still is hard to regularly do it some weeks I will do it all week. Some weeks I will only do one day. Recently this week I only did it zero times and I'm behind on homework. That's what goes back to what I'm saying at the beginning. It is a fight to have close personal quiet time with God. But through Women of Valor, I started becoming convicted of my lack of relationship with Jesus and I am now currently fighting to restore my relationship with him. Through this, he's been leading me through self-deliverance, repentance, and renouncing and casting out old dead things I allowed in my life. So through me just starting in WOV and being sometimes consistent and sometimes not, when I am entering into the quiet time and prayer time, he does take me through self-deliverance. He does show me things in areas of my life that I need to let go of that are dead. And he's causing me to lose the desire to sin and he's making me unhappy with it. He's making me unhappy of the sin that I was compromising with, like the books that I used to be reading and the YouTube channels that I used to be reading. Like he literally told me a couple of YouTubers just to stop watching my personal conviction that, he gave, that he's given me. I can't be reading secular romance. I am not gonna be watching secular lifestyle YouTubers. Already, I have felt a spiritual fire awaken in me and I'm falling back in love with Jesus, my first love again. God's literally been like getting me back on fire. He's been helping me to prune things, shorten my schedules. 
you know, transition me out of places, getting me to where he wants me to be so, so that I can consistently seek him. And so that I can have no noise and chatter going on that shouldn't be there, but I can hear from him clearly and soundly. I'm just gonna give you five little tips that I've been taking on how to get back on fire for God. So one, don't condemn yourself. That is a lie and a tactic of the devil to keep you from ever getting back close to God. Condemnation is not from God. Conviction is from God, but condemnation is from the devil. Conviction says, hey, you did that, repent, turn, turn from that, return to God, he forgives you, he doesn't condemn you. Condemnation says, you are that, you did that. How could you do that? You're a horrible person. God will never love you. You better stay in that because there's no way you can ever get out of it. So if you wanna restore your relationship with God, you have to forgive yourself and allow God to forgive you. Because if you can't even forgive yourself, how can he forgive you? Because he says, forgive everyone and then I'll forgive your sins. So you have to forgive yourself. And so then once you forgive yourself, you'll realize you don't see me as horrible God. So I want to go back into your presence. Number two, recognize you have left your first love and repent to God for doing so. So in order to even go back to your first love, you have to first recognize I am not where I need to be. I am not under his anointing. I am doing it all out of my own strength. I am stressed, depressed, anxious, scared, fearful, and that's because I have left God my first love. So once you realize that, then you can be honest with yourself and repent to God and seek him. You have to be honest with yourself. You're not perfect, none of us are perfect, none of us will arrive, but you initiating the fact that you have left your first love allows God to be like, okay, great. I can come in and help. You have to lose that pride of, oh, everything's perfect, everything's dandy, everything's great, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, it's all on me. You have to realize you need a helper. The Holy Spirit is your helper. You need to realize that you are not perfect and you never will be perfect and that you need a savior, Jesus Christ. You have to realize that this life is hard and that you need a father that loves you unconditionally. That's God. You need to realize that in order to even think about going back and returning to him and getting your life in order, otherwise you're just gonna be denial and thinking you're perfect, thinking everything's dandy and great, but your world is literally falling apart and everybody else is looking at you like, is she real? does she realize she's in a burning house that's falling apart? So number four, ask the Holy Spirit to keep you disciplined and consistent with the routine. So I highly suggest you forming a routine for your quiet time, for your Bible study, whether it's gonna be in the morning or at night, just form a routine time and space where you're just gonna go and be in his presence and meet with God and talk with him and commune with him and let him talk to you. And through that, you'll be able to start bringing him throughout the day because you started being disciplined in the morning or you started being disciplined at night and you want to keep on talking with him, keep on wanting to be mindful of him and considerate of him and wanting to do what he does because you're forming a routine of always meeting him and getting filled up by him. And you literally have to be a drill sergeant on yourself. The devil's being a drill sergeant for his demons to come and attack you and keep you away. So you gotta be a drill sergeant for yourself and be like, you know what? I am not falling for your attacks. I am not going your way. I am not gonna fail. I am not gonna be drawn back to my old life. Nope, I'm moving forward. I'm picking up the pace. I'm reading my Bible. I am praying for an hour. I am praying in tongues. Like you just literally have to go after it aggressively. You and then five, allow God to prune you through this process. So as you stay consistent, as you consistently seek God's face, as you consistently meet up with God, he will start revealing things that need to come out of you, that need to be pruned from you, that you need to be healed from, that you need to be delivered from, and allow him to. I know it sounds overwhelming. I know it sounds like a long process. I know sometimes it might sound scary for some people, but trust and believe. Once you get pruned, you come out stronger, more beautiful, and better, like literally, the old you can never compare to the now pruned by God you, the new you, the new creation. He needs to get that muck and gunk that's been sticking onto you and bothering you off of you. You need to go through that pruning, that purification process in order to grow, in order to advance, in order to get out of situations that have been holding you bound so that you can go to where God wants you to do, so that you can start fulfilling his will, his call, and his purpose for you. You'll realize when you need to go prune yourself. You'll realize when you need to go through self-deliverance because you'll feel it. You'll feel it in your core. You'll feel it in your spirit like, uh, yeah, there's something there. We need to go check that. And so you just go, go to God, 
and he will do spiritual surgery and prune you and clean you off. That's it, you guys. I am not perfect, and I'm not talking from a place of, okay, I've gone here and I've arrived. No, I'm still consistently fighting for my prayer time, for my quiet time, for my relationship to be strong again, for the consecration to be consecrated to God only, for it to be under his anointing and obedient to him. I'm still fighting for that. It's a daily fight. You have to literally wake up every morning and decide, I'm gonna do what you God want me to do before I ever do what I wanna do. And I just wanna encourage you guys because as you're going through this process, I'm going through it too. I would love to hear in the comments of you guys like talking about have you ever lost your prayer life have you, and how did you get back there? Or are you consistently still fighting to get back on, in the secret space? Yeah, I would love for you guys to encourage each other in the comments to stay strong, to stay fighting the good fight because having a close relationship with Jesus is amazing. Take it from somebody who used to be in the world, who used to have no desire to serve God, who literally used to be demonized. Yeah, take it from someone who used to literally idolize the world to now I don't want any of that because none of it ever compared, none of it ever filled me up the way that knowing who Jesus is and what he has done for me and how much he loves me and letting him set me free from all of the baggage, all of the demons that he used to carry on me, those two things don't compare to each other. It is so much better with Jesus than it is with myself and the devil in the world. I just wanna let you guys know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He can't take you out. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share this video guys with your friends, with your family members who might be going through this or just need to be encouraged to stay keeping up their prayer and their quiet time with God. I'll see you guys Friday with another video. I love you guys, but God loves you more. God bless guys, bye.